Hello and welcome to Shapreneur OBC Ubo and Africa Business Radio. The only show that spotlights African women succeeding in their craft with a view to understanding their processes and celebrating their ingenuity. So, welcome to the show. On the trivia today, the focus will be on the spiritual form of self-care. Spiritual self-care, it's any ritual or practice that we do to further our connection with our higher self. Your higher self is who you truly are as an individual, the real you that is disassociated from and not influenced by the ego of fear and operates from a soul-centered place that is aligned with your purpose. Research has shown that a lifestyle that includes religion or spirituality is generally a healthier one. It is important that we nurture our spirit however we choose to help us develop a deeper meaning, understanding or connection with the universe. Some say God, it's the same. This could be in form of meditation, attending a religious service or praying. Consistent spiritual self-care helps nurture your connection to yourself and a higher power to feel both your body and soul. It also helps with inner peace, a renewed sense of purpose or belonging, an increased connection with your intuition, a greater feeling of groundedness and a deeper connection with others. What spiritual practice do you engage in and how has it been impactful? You can DM your answers on Africa Business Radio on Instagram so that we can share. And I'll be right back. After this break, stay with us. Welcome back to She Motivates. You're still listening to Shipreneur with BC Ubo and Africa Business Radio. And taking it up from the lionesses of Africa today, we have decided to celebrate Kofo Akinkwe, a Nigerian. Kofu Akinkwe is recognized globally for her entrepreneurial success story and strong business track record. She is founder and CEO of Secure ID Nigeria Limited, a market leader in smart card technology and digital security. Secure ID is a world-class manufacturing facility with the only smart card production plant in West Africa and one of only six on the continent. This company serves 16 countries across Africa and is fully certified by Visa, Verve and MasterCard. In 2012, Kofu won the Africa Awards for Entrepreneurship, Mature Business Award. Kofu is one of Africa's thought leaders in the subject of entrepreneurship and innovation in the technology sector. I hope you are inspired by Kofu Akinkube. When I come back, we go straight into the next segment. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Shiro segment of Shipreno OBC Win Africa Business Radio. This is my favorite segment of the show where I go one on one with the Shiro of the day. And today, I have a certified senior professional in human resources and an associate of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, a trained life coach and neurolinguistics programming professional, the founder of the Work Life Organization Global Limited, a professional coaching and human resources management consultancy, an award winning social media influencer, an author and a lead coach of the Harmonize Life Academy. Welcome with me, Nkem Ofonabo. Hi, Missy. Thank <laughs> Welcome. you. You're back again. Yeah, we're back again. We're back again. <laughs> I'm excited that you decided to honor this invitation and I say welcome. So Thank today you. we are going to be talking about you. Are you ready? Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I know that you started out as a human resource professional and then resigned to focus on your business and building your brand. What um, necessitated that move? Okay. Interesting story. Anytime I get to ask um, that question. It's, um, so 
I will start by saying that I have um, about 13 years work experience, but not all 13 years we are in human resources. So I have actually moved across different um, different um, business units, departments mm. in the financial institution. So I actually started with, um, before I joined the financial institution, I was with a consulting firm, but it was just a short stint, about two months. Then I moved into the banking industry, started in the retail banking division. I did about two years before I moved to the human resources. So while in human resources, I did um, employee relations. Mm. I did organizational development. My final um, position was um, recruitment, onboarding, and selection mm. before I also moved to transaction banking as a sales uh, manager. Wow, you've gone around the financial <laughs> institution. So exactly. why did you move? Why did you decide to leave and start your own thing? Okay, so while I was in HR, I've always wanted to be in the people management space, right? Even from my course of study in the, in the university, I knew that I was going to be in the people management space. Okay. So even when I found myself in the retail banking division, I knew that it was just going to be a short stay because I had a career conversation with my line manager then and I told him. So even when the opportunity came up in the human resources, it was my line manager that called my attention to it and mm. said, okay, see this rule, I think you should apply. And I did and I got into human resources. So in the line of duty... So I was in charge of onboarding while I was in human resources. So I, while I was helping in a senior vice president that resumed to just settle in, acclimatize, I, I had to take him round executive management team and all of that. So after a session with the deputy managing director, the PA called me back and I was like, did I do anything wrong? You know, so when I got back, to his office he was like the first thing he said I'm, I'm taking you to sales wow and i'm like how sales from where <laughs> i've never imagined myself as a sales manager in all of my career and he said i'm taking you to sales and this is a decision you will come back yes time to thank me and i was i was really now it's all the things i'm doing in hr i'm trying to do my professional certification this is this, hr is my life he didn't even look at me. Wow. He, had he just put a mind. call across to the head of HR then and said, I'm taking your staff to sales. And um, the head of HR was like, who? She said, in came off. And I said, no. She said, no, I'm not ready to release. I said, I'm not asking you for permission. Wow. Yes. I've made up my mind. And then he called the divisional head of the new department and said, have a conversation with her and get back to me. That was it. So as I left his office, I got a call from the divisional head. Send me your CV. So I think it was on a Friday. By Wednesday, I had my interview. And before I got to the office, they have already sent a mail to the head of HR. We found her city when we are taking her. Hey. So that was how I moved to sales, right? At first, a few months into the sales, I thought this was a mistake, right? I had to deal with the emotional... The, the, it was, I had some form of low self esteem, like, where do I start from? It's not what I'm used to. And then the target that comes with it. But at the end of the day, I sat down and I asked myself, so what is your, your, your goal at the end of the day? You, you, you are here not because you want to be here. It was a strategic decision, but mm. I had to make the best out of it. So I sat down and um, self talked myself into it and I decided to see the good side of being a sales manager, the learnings I had to identify, the skills that were required of me, the ones I have and the ones I need to acquire. And it was a deliberate decision to acquire them and just learn the lessons. And I can tell you that it was a lot of lessons, mm. a, lot of, a lot of learning curves, but it's... Um, I would say that my <laughs> my skill bank is it's loaded because of you that opportunity. You had that opportunity, wow. Yes. So why did you leave that opportunity? You still haven't answered me. So, uh, yes, I'll go back to the question. So well, while I was there, I realized that that thing 
around people management is a calling for me, mm. right? I had several experiences that um, made me realize that this is this this is my mandate. There was a time I, I had a personal experience that I'm sure we'll still talk about it. And um, I kept asking for clarity about my identity, about my purpose in life. And it was revealed to me. I had a clarity that my purpose lies in helping people become find their purpose, find their own purpose, find mm. their path, become more productive. Right. So upon that realization, I started, OK, so what can I do? Right. So the first thing I did was to try to get some certification around human resources. That was when I started doing my ACIPM, that is Associate um, Chartered uh, Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria. I did that. I did the international certification with um, as XPHR, that is Senior Professional in Human Resources with um, SHREM. After that, I, I started coaching even before I even got certified. Before you right? knew what coaching was. Before I knew what coaching was. Mm. So people started um, coming to me trying to, because I started writing. I think realizing that my my skill was in writing was also helped me because I started writing a lot. I, I used to write for Bella Niger then and people will come to me. In fact, my first client was actually someone from United Kingdom and said, Kim, how much will it cost you to coach me? And mm. I'm like... I haven't thought of this. I haven't thought of this. (laughs) And I spoke with a a few people. I made my own research and I started. I coached about two or three people and I saw my handicapped, right? And I told myself that I need to go get certified. But then I started following Larry Odushola. You know, I, I see what he is doing and I said, okay. Because of the nature of my work, I don't know how I'll get the time. Because his uh, his um, life coaching certification was always during the day, during yeah, the week. It was rather. physical too. And it was physical. So I had to take some days off work to go. To do that training. Do that training. So there was a period I took some months off work, leave of absence. That was when I went for life coaching. That was also when I did my NLP. That was a neuro linguistic um, programming certification and all of that. Are and you my senior colleague? I'm your senior. Who finished first? Mine was um, November, December 2019. Okay. I finished. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. That has been the journey. So when I realized that um, this is my calling, it's a mandate for me. And I realized that the people that were coming to me were also people that have gone through the same journey that I, I went through, mm. right? And, um, you know, I told myself, being able to, yeah, I, 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 I can confidently say that I was able to juggle both my 9 to 5 and the business because I had to start my business by the side, you know, before I was able to figure out how to go about this and um, terminate my my nine to five employment and focus on my business. I'm so, uh, I would say that I'm happy that I started it even while I was still in the paid employment Mm, alongside, alongside because it helped me see the prospect of what I was going into Mm. and it helped me plan. Mm. So So let let, let me pause you there because uh, you just said something that struck me. I see a lot of people who want to start up their own businesses and then they feel, let me abandon my job Mm -hmm. so I can focus on this business without having a well thought out plan. Mm. They haven't even tried it. So, uh, would you, what advice would you give to someone who's thinking of doing their own thing? How would you suggest (laughs) they navigate it? I will, I always say that my path is unique to me, right? Some people might just get that, um, Insights. Insights or I don't know what they call it. Inspiration and jump out and it works perfectly for them. Mm. But I will always advise that you take your time, right? And put a plan. Put a plan in place. So when I started, I think the first time I thought about this business was in 2018, right? But before then, I've always, I tell myself that I'm, um, I'm a creator, I'm an entrepreneur by nature. Even before I started the business, I've always done things by the side. I do interior design, so many things. I used to sell on Conga and all of that. I was able to manage all of mm. all of those things. But when I knew that this is long-term for me, I took my time. So 2018, 
I came up with the name. I started working on my website. I started defining the who things, you wear. the things that I want to do, the kind of services that I want to provide. Who are my ideal clients? Client. Mm-hmm. So. I will always advise someone, clarity is first. Mm. Have clarity about what it is that you want to do and put a plan, right? And then go ahead to acquire the skill set. So for me, I also took my time to acquire the skill set. Like I I told you, I had to go get the HR certification, certification, the Mm. coaching certification. Mm. Acquire the skill. Give yourself yourself time and just build your competence, Mm. right? And then also make sure that you have planned. Another challenge is the financial aspect. Mm. You know, take the time, use your nine to five income and plan yourself properly make sure that that area is covered because six months down the line Mm. i can tell you that it's not been easy (laughs) i know it's not been easy but i know that i made some plans Mm. right i have people that i have to pay i have to earn salary but you need to plan financially before you take that leap awesome so let's talk about your book the harmonized life (laughs) what's the book about who the harmonized life let me even start talking about the um, the name first. That name is so dear to my heart. I know. <laughs> yeah, the harmonizer. Now. I am the harmonizer. <laughs> my name is in Kemo for now. Yeah. <laughs> so the harmonized life. It. Um, I will call it. Um, it's not a memoir, but it's more like my journey. Right. Both career, both personal journey. I've had challenges. I always tell people that failure has taught me more lessons than success. Mm. Right? Deep. Yes. Failure has taught, taught me more, more lessons, lessons than, than success. success. Mm. I have made several mistakes. My personal life, marital life. I've made mistakes in my career as well. Right? But instead of allowing those mistakes to define me, I use those mistakes as a stepping stone to find me. Mm. Hey, <laughs> I feel the rhyme, baby girl. Yes. Instead of allowing the mistakes to define me. Yes. I use the mistakes to find, to find me. me. Please, I need a scribe. <laughs> I, I need to put down some lyrics for my rap. Yes. Awesome. So while I was in those um, depressive moment, suicidal moment mm. and hope, a state of hopelessness, I, I I thought I could find help from people, like I'll call this person, I'll ask, and everyone keeps directing me to myself, mm. that I need to find all those answers within me. Mm. So I am made of God, right? You are God. And I am God. Mm. So I started having that conversation with God. So who am I? What am I? What am I here for? If there is no marriage... If there's no career, if there's no title, if there's no, all those external things, material things, who am I? Mm. So it was at that point in time that my, my, my purpose, my identity was revealed to me. And, um, I didn't look back. I didn't look back. So I started working on it. It hasn't been easy. Sometimes people will will, will will see what you are doing and say, "Who is this one? What is she looking? What what is she seeking?" A lot of people have said so many things. I've attacked several ways, but I know that's why when I'm introducing myself, I always said I'm a purpose driven woman. You are. I'm a purpose driven woman. You are. And it's it's purpose. It's purpose journey that we are on. <laughs> <laughs> so true. On that note, we'll take a break, and when we come back. We'll talk about how... Okay, what do we talk about? When we come back, I'm going to take it up close and personal. We came off an hour. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are still having this conversation on Shipreneur with BC when Africa Business Radio and I still have my guest and Kem Ofonambo. Before I went on a break, I said I was going to go up close and personal with you when we come back. But before I get into that, I would like you to give us some snippets of your book, The Harmonized Life. Okay. Thank you, BC. 
So the harmonized life, I was saying that it's part of my personal journey. So it's um, a collection of the things I did because I realized that all those experiences disrupted the trajectory of my life, mm. right? So in the process of finding me and um, trying to position myself and become who I'm, I am called to be, there were a lot of things that I did to, you know, put my life together, to harmonize my life. Because I, I realized that um, a lot of time, especially career professionals, we focus so much on our career and then we relegate other important areas of our lives. Mm. And um, if anything happens in those areas, it's going to impact that career that you think that you hold so dear, you're doing so well. And that was exactly what happened to me. So in my own case, it was um, my, my, like, my, my relationship, marital life right and um, it disrupted every other area of my life mm. so the harmonized life it's more or less the journey to finding me and harmonizing my life and for anyone who is overwhelmed burned out and going through one challenge or the other it could be in your career it could be in your love life it could be in your personal life the harmonized life will help you put those pieces together and bring harmony to your life that's awesome. How so? So what I perceive from what you're saying is that there was like a disruption in your relationship at the time you were married. Mm -hmm. What exactly happened? Oh, a journey. <laughs> I'm all ears. A journey, right? And um, I don't even know where to start from, but I will say that everyone makes mistakes, mm. right? And that was all my own mistake. I would say that um, as at the time I took that decision to get married, I wasn't self-aware. Mm. There were a lot of things I didn't know about myself. There were, I wasn't prepared for it. I think it was more of, oh, society, everyone wants you to go get married. I know that at that point in my life, I wanted to pursue my academics. I wanted to go for my master's and families everybody was like why what are you doing go and get married this is that you know and i said okay if she's married let me go and get married and um that was it three months into the marriage i think even before the marriage there were red flags mm. red flags that i overlooked and i thought it was it was gonna be okay wow like a month to or two months to wedding um <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. Yes. So two months to the wedding, I had I had an opportunity to end that marriage, but I did not. I did not, and I felt it was something that you know I could be worked on. And marriage happened. Three months into the marriage, that was when I experienced my first domestic violence. Wow. Yes. You know. And it was strange to me because I've never been in a violent marriage or violent relationship, relationship, right? So it was strange to me. I didn't even tell anyone, not even my parents. I think the first, the first thing I did was I went to church hmm. to pray it off. Not to pray it off. To I actually to spoke. The yeah, I spoke to the priest, and um, the priest um, called him and uh, spoke to us said okay we're gonna come for like a personal one-on-one -on -one counseling when the time came for the counseling he declined oh yes and everything continued everything the same it was like a pattern it continued first one happened second one happened third one happened i think it was the third one that i had to speak out physical abuse yes I have, I have a fractured finger as a Whoa. result. But I had to speak out. The funny thing is that when you are with this kind of people, I, I think I've been able to understand the kind of person he is based on my interaction with um, Larry Lushola and everything. So he's more of a psychopath. Mm. Right? The thing is that when I actually spoke out, he denied it all. He's a narcissist? Part of it. A mixture of both, really. Hmm. He denied it. 
until I started bringing up instances, look at how it happened and all of that. And it was like, okay, now you're going into details. Why would I go into detail? So it, it was beyond, for me, it was beyond the abuse. There were just so many other things. There was deceit, just so many things that I, I overlooked. I didn't hmm. do my background check very well. And even the things I saw towards the, the wedding, I overlooked them and said, okay, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'm working. I'll be fine. I'll take care of myself. So it was a lot of things. But when I realized that the abuse wasn't going to stop and it was affecting me mentally, psychologically, emotionally, every area of my life, right? And I just just couldn't get help. Hmm. You know, a lot of people will, I, I know I opened up to some people and they'll tell you, can pray, 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 especially his mother. He said, <sighs> pray. Well, it wasn't something that prayer was going to solve. I had to leave so that I could leave. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm just thankful to God that everything happened the way it happened. For a reason. Yes, for a reason. Because even my leaving was initiated by him oh yes wow. so I, I i i could see god's hand in everything i could see god's hand in everything i left and um it wasn't easy there was a lot of stigmatization people, you know marriage is is so sacred in this part of the world <sighs> and nobody nobody understands you Nobody except, wants to. Nobody even wants to. Mm. Except you, that is. Mm. So, so, so the thing is, once you are married, whatever you need to do, just make it work. You come out, you are seen as a failure. Mm -hmm. Now, how long did this abuse go on for? And how were you coping with the abuse alongside your work? So, the marriage lasted for a year, six months. Yes. <laughs> wow. A year, six months. Yes. And it actually started, apart from the incident that happened before our, our wedding, which wasn't um, physical, like he didn't hit me. It was just me seeing the some signs, signs of him, you know. I, so I would say, like I said, three months into the wedding, because we got married in April. The first episode happened in July. Another one happened in December of the same year. And then another one happened in April the next year, right? So I would say maybe within a year, within a year. So at a point when I left, right, something happened and I knew that if I don't manage it properly, that maybe another episode could have happened. Even at the point where I was leaving, he did everything possible to instigate me, to make me to talk. So at some point, I was living on eggshell. Hmm. I was living on eggshell and I couldn't talk. And then I realized that, like you asked me, how did it affect my career and everything? That was the period I had the poorest of performance because all my mind was back home. Hmm. The fear, the, you know... I was just living in fear hmm. just to, you know, not experience any of that episode, just when trying to home. manage myself. You at work, you're thinking of, okay, what's going to happen if you get home now? Hmm. At some point I had to even make my, a family member of mine, my sibling to come and live with us, but it didn't stop it. Wow. It didn't stop. If I had the last episode, my younger sister was there. Oh my goodness. Yes. My younger sister was there. So it affected everything. So me even talking about work, because I couldn't tell anyone, but I realized that the people I was working with actually saw it, even without me saying it. The unspoken reaction. And the end. The day I came with um, a, a bandaged finger, I lied to them. I can't even remember what I said, whether it was a wardrobe or my car. So one morning, my boss that usually come to work, maybe like 9 a.m., came to work like 7 a.m., very early. And she knows that, of course, I'll be at work. She said, okay, come to my office. Tell me exactly what's happening because I know that this hand wasn't a car hmm. or wasn't a wardrobe. You know, so 
and uh, we've had several conversations about me not doing well and everyone was like no this wasn't the same Unkem that joined us mm. really. what exactly is happening well funny thing was as at the time she called me and another line manager of mine called me I had actually left but I didn't tell anyone I was still wearing my wedding ring, covering up, think everyone thought all things were well. You know, it was, it was crazy. I remember leaving, staying with friends. There's this friend I had to stay in her house for like three months before I could even get a place of mine. It was a whole lot of trauma. Hmm. I, I can understand. It was. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you have healed because... Uh, for you to share this shows that you have gone through the process of healing. Now, I would like you to tell us what you did. How were you able to heal? What were the processes? What did you have to do? Did you talk to somebody? Did you pray about it? How did you finally get over it? It was a lot. Like, and like I said, not everyone understands. I, I know a lot of people that I told the story in confidence. A lot of people went out and turned the story upside down. Some said, this one cannot stay in marriage. This one is too materialistic. Oh, wow. So many stories, but it's always important to find people who have your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. So one of the people I shared this, uh, the experience with, and I know she was among the people that helped me. In fact, she actually like, do you want to have like a join a support group or something? I said, no, I just want to keep this to myself between us, right? So we started more like a therapy session I yeah, shared everything. In fact, the first day I came to our office, I broke down. I couldn't talk for like 30 minutes. I was crying and she said, okay, it's fine. Just cry. Mm. So at the end of the day, I shared the experience with her and um, she was like, are you ready to come on this healing journey with me? And I said, of course. So I think that was my first experience with coaching and therapy. So I would say coaching and therapy helped you, helped me, mm. right? But before I even moved to coaching and therapy, you asked me how I dealt with it. It wasn't easy at all. For months, even up to a year, I hmm, I wouldn't sleep. Like, I would be up all night crying. Mm. Sometimes my elder sister, 4 a.m., uh, she would buzz me like, why are you still awake? I said, I can't sleep. I said, you want to kill yourself? Mm. You know, so I dealt with all of that. At some point, <laughs> I was just constantly ill, like one sickness to the okay, other. Okay. Wow. I kept going to the hospital and then the doctor would tell me, we've run all the tests. There's really nothing wrong with you. So that doctor, I, I don't remember his name again. He now called me to his office and said, I okay, all what you are manifesting are symptoms of depression. Mm. I remember him sending me books about depression and everything. And I had to also share what I was going through with him. So therapy came in from him as well. Because he was now the one that asked me, do you want to go back to this marriage? I said, no. Because mm. this person will kill me. Imagine someone that said, I haven't even touched you. Today I will, I will touch you. I will cripple you. What? Yes. And my parents were like, we didn't give you a crippled child. You know, so that fear, I was mm. like, even if anything can be amended, that thought alone, mm. I, can, I don't think was, I can. That was too much. I don't think I, I, can, I can go back to that. So that was where the healing process started. started. When I defied a friend of mine was like, so why are you still wearing the ring? Throw the ring away. And I did. So you didn't sell it. I it was, was said. I, I I know they will I say I'm a businesswoman now. But <laughs> hello, <laughs> make, make, make lemon. It was, it, was, lemon. It, was a, it was expensive. I bought that. Ring. You threw it away. I don't even know where it is. Cam, oh god, you should have met me. <laughs> I feel I feel terrible now. That's some good money lost. Anyway, but let, 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 let me ask you. Let me ask you. Um, what are some of the lessons that you learned? from the past relationship because I know you're a beautiful young woman you're successful you're doing mm -hmm. amazing and you will find love again so this is a prophecy for me <laughs> you will course. find love but what are some of the mistakes that you've learned from that you will not repeat it repeat again when you finally get into a loving relationship 
So like I said, failure taught me a lot of lessons, right? And um, if there is anything I learned, even if it's not what I want, what I don't want. Mm. So those things that I don't want, I turn them into affirmation, right? And I tell myself that I want the opposite of this yeah, and true. I keep confessing it. So, so the question you asked me is what are the lessons? So... The lesson, first of all, is um, not being desperate. Hmm. One, not being desperate. You don't let pressure, societal pressure, parental pressure, whatever pressure, put you or push you into doing things you are not ready for. Because I could tell you, to be honest, I wasn't ready for it. Hmm. As at the time I took that decision, I wanted to pursue my career. I wanted, to, I wanted to go back to school. I actually got admission in Wisconsin University. And you couldn't go because of I marriage. Couldn't go. Hmm. So know what you want in life hmm. and pursue it. That's the first thing. Then if it's marriage you want, because I'm not saying that marriage is bad. Marriage is beautiful. And for those that want it, will experience it. So if it's marriage you want, then also have clarity about what you want. But you have to know yourself first. Mm. It's very, very important that you know yourself. You know what you want. And then go out for it. Prayer for me is second. Seriously. Yeah, true. It's second. I you agree. have to know what you want. Because if you, pray you, you tomorrow, need to know what you you're pray, praying for. Exactly. Mm. If you pray till tomorrow, you don't know what you want. You mm. will miss it. Mm. Right? So know what you want. Mm. Go for what you want. And go for it prayerfully. Okay. And keep working on yourself because it's not like you meet that person immediately. You keep meeting people that will, mm-hmm. that might not work for you, mm. but it's because you know what you want. That's mm. when, if you see the red flag or if you see someone that you are not aligned with, you will know mm. and you'll be quick to take a decision to step aside or to just build a friendship because mm. not every friendship will lead to marriage. Exactly. Awesome. Do you still want marriage? You know, I prophesied <laughs> without asking you. <laughs> Do you still want it? Of course. Hmm. Of course. You will get it. I know. You will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it's unfortunate I have to let you go. Like, mm-hmm. this has been really insightful and deep. Mm-hmm. You have shared from. You know, when you share from your heart. Mm-hmm. And um, I would like to have you again. Where okay. we are going to talk professionally because you're loaded. Mm. I know you personally. We are <laughs> colleagues now in the industry. Yes. And I know that you have a lot to give when it comes to, uh, having a successful business, mm-hmm. you know, human resources, uh, life coaching, corporate mapping training, out your yeah, corporate training, mapping out your world and all of that. So we're going to have that. series where you come in okay. and I'll ask you questions on how you can break it down for people that are listening. So today is just about you celebrating mm-hmm. you as a <laughs> shipreneur. Your challenges, you know, everything you've been through and how you've come out strong. Give me that hand. You're strong. You're a shiro, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) You are a shiro. So thank you so much for coming. I'm going to be having you you very soon. So I'll let you know when I'm ready for you. All right. I appreciate. And um, that's all we can take on Shipreneur today. I hope you enjoyed listening to Nkem Ofonabo. I hope to have her where we're going to break down strategies that would help us succeed in our lives and our businesses. And if you have any idea on how you want this show to be better, send a DM to ask. Africa Business Radio on Instagram and we will respond. So thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you, you, everybody. And that's it till I see you (laughs) next week.